Let's start with VTK file formats. As I mentioned, VTK is a very popular library for computer graphics and visualization, and its development started in uh, the early 1990s, so it's almost 30 years. But a lot of modern day three dimensional visualization rendering packages are based on VTK, including Paraview. In VTK, there are many different file formats. All of them can be divided into two categories legacy VTK and XML formats. As the name suggests, legacy VTK is an older format going back to the early 1990s. And in a legacy VTK file, you have a header, which is always ASCII, text based header. And then there is data, which could be either ASCII or binary. In XML file format, you have an XML uh, tag, XML header, followed by data, which could be ASCII or binary or compressed. In most cases, you want to use XML file formats as opposed to legacy VTK, because XML file formats are newer and they have a number of nice features. For example, they support parallel file IO, so you can read to the same XML VTK file from different processes at the same time, and you can uh, read that file in parallel as well. Uh, they support compression, uh, they support portable uh, binary encoding, random access, and a number of other nice features. But for teaching purposes, we still use uh, legacy VTK files, and in fact, the next few examples I'm going to show you will be all legacy VTK files. In VTK, there are six major discretizations. So we'll start with image data or structured points. And this is just a Cartesian mesh. So it's Cartesian mesh, let's say in 2D or in 3D or could be in 10D. And then on each point on the mesh, you have a variable defined. Next, we have rectilinear grid, which is similar to the previous one to image data, except that the spacing between adjacent planes in major dimensions uh, differ. So for example, if you have a three-dimensional array, in addition to storing the three-dimensional array in rectilinear grid format, you have to store also three one-dimensional arrays, giving the spacing between adjacent planes in X, Y, and Z. Next, you have structure grid, and structure grid has the same topology as the previous two file formats, that is in 3D, each inner point has six neighbors. So up, down, left, right, back, and, and forward. So the topology is the same as the previous two formats, but the mesh can be deformed. In addition to storing the data variable at each point, you also store the coordinates of each point. So that means that the structure grid, you need four times as much a space on disk to store a three-dimensional array as with the first format. Because with structure grid, you're storing not just a three-dimensional grid, but also X, Y, and Z, which are also uh, three-dimensional arrays. Next, you have particles, one structure points, and these are just points on top of which you store some data, some variables. Next, you have polygonal mesh. In polygonal mesh, you have points and connections, edges between the points. You can form up to uh, two-dimensional cells, and then data can be defined on top of points or on the edges on connections between points and also on the two-dimensional cells. And polygonal data is very popular for storing surfaces in three-dimensional space or for storing objects. Typically, an object in 3D will be stored with a polygonal surface. And then you have unstructured grid, which is very similar to polygonal data, except that cells can be three-dimensional. So using the unstructured grid file format in VTK, you can encode a lot of different cells, and they don't even have to be closed cells. So you can encode a collection of points or graphs or networks or two-dimensional cells or three-dimensional cells. So here, uh, if you have, let's say, a closed three-dimensional cell, then data can be defined on the vertices at the points, then on the edges, on the sides, as well as in the middle of the cell. So you have these six discretizations in VTK, and then on top of these discretizations, you can store variables. What kind of variables? Well, you can store a scalar field. You can store a vector field, so that is a vector at each point. You can store a normal field, which is a unit vector. You can store a lookup table, which is essentially a table of colors corresponding to the value of the variable. You can store texture coordinates, which are used for mapping. 
you can store uh, tensors, and also you can store a uh, field data, which is uh, arrays of data arrays. So essentially high dimensional tensors. Let's take a look at three very simple examples. The first one, volume.vtk file, gives you an example of structured points. So if we go back, structured points is the very first file format with a Cartesian mesh. So here we have a Cartesian mesh in 3D. It's 3 by 4 by 6, 72 points in total. And on top of this mesh, we have one scalar field and one vector field. So let's take a look at the file itself. Uh, the file is called volume.vtk, and here it is. At the beginning of the file, we have the header right here, which says that this is a VTK file. Data is stored as ASCII, as text. The discretization we're using is structured points, that is a Cartesian mesh. The file is 3 by 4 by 6. Spacing is the spacing between adjacent planes in X, Y, and Z. That's why you have three numbers and it's uniform in each dimension. Origin is the x, y, z coordinates of one of the corners of the cube. Point data 72 means that we have 72 points in total. Then we have the first variable. It's called density. It's a single precision variable. Float means single precision. It's a scalar variable. And then one means uh, it's just a single variable. And then when we load this variable into ParaView, we're going to use a default lookup table. So essentially, this means use the default color map. Do not store the color map as part of the data set. And what follows are 72 numbers. This is a 3 by 4 by 6 Cartesian mesh. And we have uh, three loops. Let's say i goes from 1 to 3, j goes from 1 to 4, and then k goes from 1 to 6. So we have three nested loops. And then inside, we're printing the value of density at point i, j, k. When we run this loop, we have 72 numbers, and here they are. And it does not matter how many numbers we have per line. We could have 72 lines, we could have uh, one line with 72 numbers, or anything in between. And as long as we have 72 numbers here, Paraview will be able to read them. And then we have a single precision variable called velocity, and it's a vector field. So there are three components, and then there are 72 lines uh, with velocity. And you see that all components are exactly the same. So that means this is a constant velocity field. Now let's load this file into Paraview. So let me actually switch from Paraview 5.3 to the more recent Paraview 5.8. And then I will go to File, Open. In my home directory, I have Paraview folder and then data. And the file is called volume.vtk. Now, I don't have to fill any, anything in the properties because all data description is in the header of the file. All I need to do is just hit apply and my data set is loaded. So by default, I'll get the outline view. I will switch to the surface view and then I will call the data set by, there are two variables, let's call it by density. And here we go. As you can see, this is a very low resolution data set. So the density variable goes roughly from 0 to 50. And in fact, if you click on the Information tab, you will see that density, yes, indeed, ranges from 0 to 50. And then the velocity field is constant. So each component ranges from 1 to 1. So it's a constant velocity field. Now, if I color by velocity, then I will just get a uniform color because it's a constant variable. Switch back to coloring by density. And I can switch, for example, to a volumetric view. Here we go. Switch back to surface view. OK, now let's take a look at the second example. Here we have a file called density.vtk, and it's a structure grid. So if we go back, structure grid is the curvilinear file format. So this is regular topology, but we're also supplying the x, y, and z coordinates of each grid point in 3D. So here we have a 2 by 2 by 2 data set. It's an even lower resolution data set, 8 points in total. And on top of this uh, structured grid, curvilinear mesh, we have one scalar field. Let's take a look at the file. So it's called density.vtk. And this is the entire file. Again, here's the header. And it says that 
data is stored as ASCII, as text. Data set is defined on top of structure grid. Its dimensions are two by two by two. Uh, there are eight points in total. And these are the X, Y, and Z coordinates of the eight points. And then here we have eight points. We have a scalar field called density. It's single precision. We're gonna use a default lookup table when below this file into pair view. And these are the eight values of density. So let's load this file into pair view. I will disconnect from the server. I'll go to file open. And then I'll load the file called density.vtk. Hit apply. And here's my file. And as you can see, it looks very strange. It's nearly flat, but still it's a two by two by two mesh. So let's switch to a surface view and then color by density. And as you can see, density goes roughly from 0 0.27 to 0 0.6.4. We can verify that by clicking on the information panel right here, the range of density is the only variable that we have. And we can visualize it very nicely, even though this is an extremely low resolution data set. And the final VTK example I'm going to show you is a file cube.vtk. And this file is more complex. Uh, this is just to show you that you can define data on different elements in polygonal data set. So here we have a cube represented by six polygonal faces. And then on each face, we have a single component scalar, a normal field, and a tensor field defined. And then on each vertex, in each corner of the cube, we also have a scalar data set. And then there's also a lookup table of eight colors associated with these points. Or when we load the file into Paraview, it's not going to look very interesting. But this is just to show you that you can have data centered on different elements in the data set. So let me delete this guy. And then I will go to File Open and load the file cube.vtk. Hit Apply. And here's my data set. And as you can see, there are a number of variables. So we can actually color by different uh, by different scalars. So for example, this scale is clearly defined on each face of the cube.